Hi there, my name is Elder Moraes. I work at Oracle as Cloud Evangelist, and today I'm going to talk to you about real microservices with Java EE. Well, microservices is one of the most important buzzwords that we have in, in the software industry. And uh, not surprising because many big companies, many big projects are using it today. So what about Java EE? Is it possible to, to build microservice, real microservice with Java EE? Of course it is, and I'm going to show you right now. That's a simple demo here. I'm showing a lot of code. Uh, well, I have here uh, an example of a monolith build uh, with Java E, and then I'm going to show you how to broke the monolith into microservice. So basically, what I'm doing here, it's a simple example uh, playing with player and rank, li like a game or, or so. So we have here an entity that is our player, okay? Uh, think about GPA, a database, and so on. So we have here an entity that is a player, and we have also another entity that is our player rank, that, or another entity that's related to, to our player. We have here the relation with the player, okay? This will be important when we are breaking down into microservice. And we also have our beings that will make the, the manipulation of the data with player, as we've done also with JPA. So we can save player, remove player, find by ID, find all. And we have the same for a, sorry, for rank. So we have here <coughs> another stateless bin that will also save, remove, find by ID and find all. And here we built, uh, we built some, some service, some endpoint service, REST endpoint service for uh, actually find by ID, add new, save, remove, uh, the, same, the same stuff that we've done with the, the stateless service, all right? And here we have for our player rank, okay? So what I've done here also for our, our monolith is I've wrote several G-unit uh, tests here so we can try if the, those, those stuff are working. So we can try it right now. And we use basically the same stuff that, that we've done before in this series with JPA where we created uh, a test for running our JPA access to database and try out those methods for JPA. Okay, so it's built. The test, the text running su successfully. So this is our monolith doing with Java. So how do we now can take those monolith and break it down in two microservice? Because we have here the player and the player rank. Let's split this monolith in two process, in two projects, in two artifacts, so we can have a kind of uh, microservice here. So first of all, we have just split it in two projects. Basically, we have the same same files here, uh, here on the, the on this project, on the microservice player. And we have, on the, on the specific case of the player, we didn't have any change at all except for well, there is no rank in the project. So oh, if we have here the, the bin is almost the same the same bin and and if we have here the service the endpoint is also the same, didn't change at all. So the project for play didn't change so much. For the rank we have yes uh, some changes because as I said before there was a relation between the rank and the player. So what I've done here is that there is, as we don't have player anymore inside the project, and when we are doing microservice, we usually, and this is the, the best practice, that each service has its own da database. So in this case, we are changing the player relationship for just a uh, player ID. So we have changed it here for a long, instead of the uh, specifically player object. So we are just storing the player ID in the database for rank. And then 
you it will up to the application to do the relationship or if you have some reports to take after that it will be up to the reports to do that relationship their logical relationship because uh, each data each microservice has to to hold its own database okay so that's why we changed it here and that's what basically the most changed okay so when you have the the, the endpoint service didn't change that much and uh, well but just splitting the, the the project into two pieces isn't enough okay that's not enough to have the real microservice one approach that we use it here is to is called uh, api gateway okay so we just built a gateway to deal with those both microservices. so we have here a player gateway that will hold the, this the, the the communication between your client okay, okay can be a mobile client a web client a desktop client whatever client do you have it the gateway will be inside in the middle of communication between your microservice and your client so here we have uh, another endpoint that will build a, a client a web client web target and you just pointing to to your microservice player and here communicate with the the same endpoints that we have on the the player on the microservice player and on the endpoint for them so find by id find all and player service for save and for removing so here we have the possibility to have all the the exception dealing all the, the the any specific activity or management that you need to to have with from microservice you can do in this gateway and we have also a endpoint gateway for your your rank in the same in the same way that we done on the player so we have here uh, building a client and here doing the communication with your your endpoint that is in the microservice. The, the the good part for from the gateway is that you can use it for for example if the your microservice change the 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 place the DNS the address or change technology or change port or change anything that the 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 contract between the the, the APIs you can keep your gateway still and touch it for your client perspective but your microservice perspective you can change a lot and without break any relationship with your clients okay you can also even change the technology if you are using uh, java and you you're gonna use python or okay, gonna use anything you can use the gateway to to decrease the the break that you could cause to the, your clients so it's very good uh, it's one approach, okay, but that's what we use here. So we get a monolith and we break and broken in two projects, two microservice, and you created a new service that is our gateway to communicate between them. And if we have another microservice, another application that we build in our application, we just put it in inside of our gateway and your client just access your gateway and you are very very uh, flexible to to give another features new features to your clients okay so as you saw it's quite simple to to take your java application and break down into microservice actually isn't just break down the whole code you need us uh, actually the environment you need some service discovery service registry but for for coding perspective it's a way to get started and hope you enjoyed and also i hope you enjoyed the whole series and uh, find this helpful and thank you very much